I'm John Richards, and this is live on KEXP at home. I'm at home with uh, Langhorn Slim, I believe, at your home. Is that where we find you today? At home, in my bedroom. In your bedroom, no less. Well, I feel very yeah. honored. I'm I'm not. I'm in my office. But we're both getting a little sunlight today. Mine on the East Coast, or mine on the West Coast, you on the East Coast. Where are you right now? I'm in Nashville. So you're home, Nashville, still home for you? Yeah, coming up on almost 10 years, which is crazy. I have to ask, you know, when um, I'm watching the news right before the pandemic, uh, that horrible tornado that just ripped through, especially East Nashville, I thought of you and many of my music friends who live in that area. And, and that happened right before the pandemic, right? Wasn't that February 2019? Yeah, it was. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but that sounds about right. It happened... Um, and no more than like two weeks after that, we were, we were in lockdown. Man. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a wild I, ride, brother. I know. I was going to say like when those things happen in, in a, in a combination like that, so closely related, what is, and, and you were already dealing with some other things as well in your life. Like, was that overwhelming for you, just being in that location with those things happening? Did it seem overwhelming life at, at that time, or was it just... Due to other things that I guess I, I would imagine we'll get into, personal uh, sorts of things that um, that I'm down to make not so personal. Um, yeah, things seemed overwhelming. Um, uh, it things seem like a lot of things, John. I don't know how to how to really sum it up. I mean, I will say that with tragedy, there's a beautiful human side that you get to see. And like the tornado, as tra as awful as that was, and it like ripped apart the street next to my street and killed some people and was devastating. Um, and we're still not totally rebuilt at all from it. You also got to see the community come together in a way that you don't typically see, even though the the community here is is really tight knit. Um, and it's it's beautiful, but sad that it takes um, awful things sometimes to bring out the best in us. But um, yeah, that was something that was very wild to see. There was a lot of us out on the street helping each other, trying to clean up. Uh, all kinds of um, effort to be there for one another. And then very shortly after, it was everybody get inside. Um, some of what I was dealing with personally on the sobriety front and, and all that, like, I, you know, going into total isolation isn't exactly recommended. Um There and I'm sure we'll get into it as we talk. There, there is, and maybe for my own survival, I try to lean into the the positive sides of things for for myself. And in ways, though it does seem weird and feel weird to say, and I'm not totally unique in this. This last year has been one of the best for me, maybe in my life, in my own personal journey, if you will. So, some of it just sort of seems like wild cosmic timing, as far as a dude like me who needed to simplify and slow down and literally and figuratively go inside for a while and stop being on the move, chasing the adventure constantly in motion to try and not just intellectually get into the idea of the adventure being stillness and finding some quiet and some peace in the stillness, but letting that actually for the perhaps the first time in my life, like be the way that I am living. Some days easier, some days harder. Yeah. yeah. And, and I follow you on Instagram and um, I really, I just saw you naked the other day on Instagram celebrating spring, by the way. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. And uh, what I well, like to do it, they don't let the ladies do it. Isn't that weird? Show my nipples all I want. It's really yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah. It's really weird how we have that, you know, um, double standard on nipples and nudity. It's, uh, it's very weird. Uh, and what I love, though, what, before the nudity, and uh, was that you were launching songs. And I kept seeing songs come up. And I was reading a little bit about this record and that you were going to Instagram when you finish these songs, if you like them or not, which really feels like slowing down 
and then just putting something out in the world and not overthinking it. And I know the first song we're going to hear in this session, and it really resonated with me, who deals with panic attacks. And I've had a couple over this pandemic, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, it really feels close to home when I when I listen to that song, when I listen to your session in particular that, that we're going to air here in a sec. Um, it really does feel like you are sitting down and almost had a recorder while you talked to your therapist and it became a song. Can you, can you just tell me and introduce uh, the first song, Panic Attack? Uh, and I'm sorry that you also deal with this and I know that you do because we're friends and I also follow you, you online. Um, and uh, I was really glad to see that we were going to do this interview together because I feel like I've, I've we've probably learned more about each other um, <laughs> through, through us just being open about our stuff um, than, than certainly than I knew of you, you know, just coming to, to town and, and doing the show over the years. Right. And I appreciate your openness with all of it. But yeah, for, that song was, um, I think people that struggle with this stuff can connect to it because it was written in the midst of a, of a panic attack, uh, which a therapist who I had just started to see at that time, I went to treatment for, I got sober like seven and a half years ago here in Nashville. Somehow I stayed away from booze, but I was prescribed um, medication that a fellow like me doesn't need to be prescribed. Not blaming the doctor. I was less than honest about it. But um, I got hooked on on benzos and that led me to a gnarly relapse <clears throat> that lasted some years and i got I, I was out on the west coast living and trying to finish a record and was unable to finish the record and banging my head against the wall in more ways than many in many many ways and i got home to nashville after about eight months and went to treatment right out of treatment there was the tornado right out of the tornado was the, so all of those things were, were really synced up and I had spoken to to a therapist who I had started to see who I was talking about you know when I had gotten sober before my life changed in so many beautiful ways I didn't do it at the time um, with any help I didn't connect to a community of other sober people outside of some friends that I had um, I didn't know what I was missing and not doing that. I just kind of thought, well, I'm sober and staying away from I'm on the road, staying away from booze. Uh, this, this must be it. And then life does what life does and um, anxiety, depression. I got a lot of feelings, brother, as a lot of us do. And I feel them deeply. And as a grown man, I don't know how to dance with all of those feelings and they become very overwhelming. And so it, to me at this point, it's not a huge surprise that I would in my life turn to things that ease me. Uh, I don't, I'm not that patient. I'm working on that. But if there's something in a bottle um, that can like change the way that I feel for a little bit, it's easy for me to, to go to that. So in, in not feeding the, the creature of that arm of my addiction or addictive uh, personality, other things come up and they make me very anxious and all of that sort of stuff. So I was, I was having this kind of conversation with the therapist and she said, well, you're a musical, you know, being, um, when the anxieties, you know, manifest, cause the way I express it to somebody when I'm talking about it, this sort of thing is that, cause it is hard to put into words. It, Whatever the thought is that triggers the uh, fear and then the uh, sort of full-blown thing, I don't even really know what it is because it, it seems to happen so fast. So it's hard for me to catch a thought before it manifests into a physical freak out, if that makes sense. To even know how to like dance a little different, whatever. So she was saying, well, when it hits, um, do you ever play music during that time? And I... Maybe I have, maybe I haven't, I don't know. But the idea of doing that as a sort of exercise or an assignment um, didn't sound very good to me. And I think it made me, that in and of itself made me feel quite anxious. But I respect her a lot. And, um, and so I jotted it down and put it in my pocket or something. Um, put it somewhere. And in the first couple of months of the pandemic, I had one of these sort of episodes and, um, and I remembered what she said and then just all of the words 
to that song and the melody just sort of floated by slow enough as I was laying on the couch <clears throat> and uh, I grabbed the guitar and and spit it out, spit it up. But yeah, it's just exactly, I didn't take much creative liberty. It's just exactly what was going on from from calling a healthcare professional, wanting to speak to someone, you know, it's all just in the song. So it's very, it's sort of just like journal entry, stream of conscious kind of a deal. All right, well, let's see it. It's a long journey home. 
practice as it is in my mind You say hello, how are you? I tell you that I'm doing fine Oh, but it's days like these Nothing's prepared me I don't know why, but sometimes everything scares me Maybe it's society Maybe in the womb I was shaking with anxiety mm -hmm. Live my toothless dreams I scream Hope no one hears me I don't know why But sometimes everything scares me As Langhorn Slim here at Live on KEXP at home, and uh, I think the the cat at the end uh, made my day. Um, what's the, what's your cat's name? Mr. Beautiful. Mr. Beautiful. Did you name your cat? My friend did because I was <laughs> indecisive. What is it? Such a big decision. That's right. I had a cat <laughs> growing up, and yeah. my, my cat's name. And we had this cat for almost fifteen years. Was Cat. Oh. Yeah, that's a good name for a cat. <laughs> I saw your cat, and that's the other star of your Instagram. I should mention earlier, I also see sweet pictures of, of your animal. And, yeah, um, I've become a full-blown cat, man, lady, person. You know, I we, we just got a dog here at my house. We're a little late during this pandemic, and, um, and uh, I forgot how much um, animals, even a puppy, um, put me in the moment. Nothing has put me in the moment better than a, than a, than a dog. And I, and my kids, my kids do do that. Um, but you know, the world's been, you know, it's every week, it seems like heavy, 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 heavy. And the song, everything scares me. I, I should mention was an unreleased song. Thank you for playing that. Um, I had that, that's sort of getting back to our panic attack feeling. That's sort of my, where I get freaked out is that everything is so scary for the things that even help me. Like I'm scared for my kids. I'm yeah. scared for me. I'm scared for my world. This pandemic is, um, the, not the pandemic itself, but maybe the response to it has really solidified some of my, um, <laughs> some really of, it, it, it confirms some of my anxiety, which is kind of some, somewhat comforting and then somewhat scary. Um, but I've realized that if I'm not in the moment and getting little, they're little victories. Like a little victory to me is, I got up today and I did my radio show um, and I pet the dog. You know, like you have to start finding those little things. You talked about slowing down earlier. I have found that the best medicine for me right now is is to find the little 
each day victories. Like right now, I get I have a son in Seattle. Like that to me, I have to focus on that because just the other day I was like, I am so sick of this weather that <laughs> I'm so done. And so I've been trying to find that. Do you find that with with your where do you find that? You're in the moment moment. Is it the is it is it Mr. I also have to remind myself and to I've been I'm not currently, but over this pandemic I've been doing gratitude lists, which some years ago that might have seemed like that's not I don't want to write a gratitude, you know, probably because I was ungrateful. I find that it helps. I also find, John, that that there's so much in the world this year, but there's always so much in the world that is terrifying and heartbreaking and um, and just maddening. And my own personal... condition. Oftentimes, though, I, I am affected by it all, of course. A lot of times it seems to have very little to do with what's going on out there. And so if I'm all spun out on the inside, every like, I, can, do you curse on this or you don't curse on this? No, I, I think you can. Oh, you can You can or cannot? I would. Oh, okay, good. Well, it's like, if you got shit in your eyes, everything looks shitty, right? That's right. And so that's, uh, and you also get pink eye. Um, <laughs> but that's, you know, I got to keep it simple and like little silly sayings that I think of like that, 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 that helped me just to remember, you know, it's like, there's a line in the, in one of the songs too, the world looks dark when your head shoved up your ass. It's, that's for whoever wants it, but that's for me because I've lived like that. And a lot of the day, every day I live like that. So it, it is a constant where I'm at over here is just constantly trying to get out of my own head, out of my own way to be grateful for all that I do have. Um, that it's like warm out there, that my cat is cute and like cuddles with me and just like stuff like that. Um, I think that I don't think I'm certain. The only thing I'm certain, the world will continue to be maddening. And I'm trying not to buy a ticket for every flaming hamster wheel that is out there because they're endless. And now that we're glued to our screens and that's something I want to like work on over here too, because, you know, I got sober, but then you sort of transfer it. I'm, I'm on my phone constantly and it's there's nothing in there for me. I had a, um, I had a really, like, I was embarrassed to admit to, my wife, I broke down in tears about that I couldn't put my phone down. Like I, I couldn't put it down. I, I, I like couldn't put it away. I couldn't stop looking at Twitter. This was um, at some point during this pandemic, it might've been early when politics were insane and the world seemed correct. Like I couldn't do it. And I broke down that I, uh, my, my addiction or like my anxiety was glued to it. And I know that's a control thing. I'm trying to control everything by finding information and all it's doing is spiraling out of control. It is, I was on every flaming hamster wheel there was. And it, that's, that I think was my last panic attack. And I didn't realize it was about my phone and my phone represented just everything bad out in the world. And it really was, it was a come to Jesus moment for me. Yeah. You know, with any sort of, and I don't just think this is with, you know, alcoholics or addicts or anything, but it, it, I could only speak for myself in that the things that I often turn to for some, uh, even if it if, even if it isn't logical, what I turn to to find some peace or a good feeling are often the things that eventually will drive me totally out of my damn mind. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, drugs, alcohol, chasing career things. Um, and the phone, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a, a routine where, where when I get up in the morning, I, I meditate and I read some nice readings. Uh, and I'm often, and I'm embarrassed to admit it too, brother. I, I am often reaching for the effing phone and saying to myself, much as I did toward the end of my drinking or, or toward the end of this last um, run in with drugs, I don't want to do this. This is not what I want to do. And, um, you know, I've heard people talk about it like, you know, there's something else that sort of takes over. However people describe it for themselves is fine. But um, we become so dependent on these 
on these behaviors, even if it is, and maybe not even, especially if it is whipping us. Maybe there's something to that that we, um, and I'm not talking about the fun kind of whipping, you know, this is like, uh, it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know, but it's, um, uh, I've lost my train of thought entirely, but in just trying to bring it back around in trying to break some of those, um, those patterns and just to sit with whatever that is within me that I just feel uncomfortable or I feel awkward or I feel anxious or blah, 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 <clears throat> to try to sit with that, which is easier said than done, uh, and not reach for whatever that thing is. It allows more space for, uh, what I would call divine energy, um, to come into the room. And in this case with all of these songs that, I, cause I wrote all of the songs on this record in like two months, two and a half months. Um, that I think that was a part of how I was able to be very creative over this time. Um, and other, you know, getting sober again about all this sort of stuff, but, um, just being still and trying, uh, far from perfectly, far from perfectly, but trying to just sit with my ass. Well, that, you know, that, that's where you, you sit. Really, no, if you, li- if you listen to the record, that's why the record meant so much to me too. And I, you know, I've clearly played and God, I think the first, I think that you're maybe your first record, um, uh, you were live on the show or, or the second, uh, I can't remember, but it was a while ago. Well, <laughs> you're, I'll tell you this. I, I, you're, you were the first person that I'm aware of that ever played me on the radio. You got in touch with me on MySpace after hearing my first EP or, oh, yeah. and I was like, this can't be a real person <laughs> on a real radio. <laughs> it was you. It, everything but the MySpace hasn't really changed. Like we still no. do that. We still play yeah. bands the first time. And I, what I liked about your music too, was just how honest it was. The storytelling, such a fan of stories in those songs. And you played live when we were in New York. It was one of my favorite sessions. Oh, um, it was just, it was just, it was great. And, and I listened to Strawberry Mansion. This is your seventh full length album. And, um, and this one is, 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 I never thought I'd say this because I've listened to all your records so much, the, whole, the most honest, the most personal, and meant the most to someone like me. And I hope others out there, and I really recommend this to anyone who, who's seen this or hearing this, that if you are dealing with, with panic attacks, or if you're dealing with anxiety or, or you're having a time right now, um, this, this sounds like you are talking to me, you are singing to me, um, with your own experiences. And I, and I think it's really brave that you put it out in the world. Um, I know we both, we mentioned social media, we both taken a social media and done, try to be, try to do something with our own issues and put them out there in the world. And you've gone, you know, again, being a musician, a step further and put them on this record. And I, and I, I, I just think it's, it's such, if someone were to sit me down and say, well, what record for you during the pandemic really sums up a lot of what was going on? I'd say, well, I'd say my pal Langhorn Slim's record would probably be the one that I would point at because you, you're going through um, <laughs> sobriety. You had writer's block, <laughs> a tornado just ripped through your city. Um, a lot of other things too that, that I'm sure were going on in your life that comes with addiction and it comes with um, everything that, that you went through. And it's just, it's just a, a brilliantly just honest record. Um, and, and congratulations on it. Thank you, man. And I, I, I will just say that with all of that shit going on, I was starting to break open again and recognize myself again and, and to have a desire. And I think, again, as tragic as the circumstances are, continue to be, it forced me to be still and deal with some, you know, peel back some of the layers and see what was there. And I'm, you know, I'll probably be doing that forever. Uh, some days it's very exciting that that's the adventure I'm on. Some days it's very overwhelming and terrifying, but, um, I don't know that if I had an eight month tour or three, whatever it was, if the thing was still rolling left to my own devices, I don't know that I would have sat connected with other people that deal with what I'd, deal with what you deal with in your own way and what so many of us do um and just start to try to to do some work that i think i've been uh i would say running from for a long time are you at all just really quickly uh, uh, this struck me too because i have a little bit of this are you a little nervous about everything opening back up and having to re-enter yeah. society yes i am are you prepared do you have a plan or are you just a little freaked out like i am 
I'm a little freaked out for a lot of reasons, but <clears throat> I notice that there's an anxiety that I feel because there's been this ability to slow down and to, even without trying to take off some of the masks, even like the stuff that we just do socially, you know, the dances that we do, what am I going to wear this or that, you know, just the muscles that we work socially. And I've, I've, been reworking some of them lately because I've been hanging out with some friends outside and stuff. And some of it is very energizing and feels great to be in the company of, of these people. And, and I would say some of the time I'm like exhausted and I don't know what the hell is going on or if, even if I want to be a part of it. There's there's definitely an element to, and I've, I've seen some friends write like um, other traveling musicians, like my worst show in Toledo, what I would do for that show. And I respect that, John, but I can't relate to it. Um, I've played my worst show out, you know, in various places many times. There's something about, uh, I've been really fortunate that I've had creative itches scratched through being able to write this record and to continue to, to write and to do some of the other work that I'm doing over here. And it, it feels fulfilling and like enough. And there's something about going back out there. And when people say getting back to normal, I don't even know what people mean by normal. Not all of what people are saying is normal, at least in my mind, was good. Um, I feel like my work here isn't done in a lot of ways. Um, so I'm excited about it. And I realize that that's from a privileged point of view and sort of a self, I mean, it's not selfish because you're asking me, me to tell you <laughs> what I think. But yeah, there's something about it where I'm like, yeah, I think yeah. there's like a cocoon syndrome too that's going on that that even though it brings up a lot of challenges, there is something safe about this flow that we found and probably some really healthy shit that we've discovered within ourselves that we don't when we're just doing the, the grind that we're all used to doing in our own ways. Well, one thing I will say, I, I do look forward to seeing some live music again, that part will be nice. And, uh, I hope to see you, uh, we're, uh, I've had to cancel the last two trips I had down to your neck of the woods. So I'm hopefully the third time's a charm and I can get down there and visit again. Yeah, um, so. I just fell in love with Nashville last time I was there and I even have my hat. I, I didn't even realize I'm wearing my, oh, it's hard my to Nashville see it. hat. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not surprised to hear that you like it out here, man. And I would love to see you over here. I was I real quick. I don't want to go play shows ever again. No, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I want to, and I only want to be at the show alone. I don't want to be around other people. Let me right. don't get me wrong. I, and and right. I will say when I got off the plane in Nashville the first time and I heard, you know, Music City, we'll see about that. I'm from Seattle. Oh, sure. Sure. And I got off the plane and I was like, oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Nashville's Music City. Okay, I can admit that. It's it is, but there's other music cities. I know, but if you love music, I didn't realize. Like, I, yeah, there's nothing that, like it, though. That's such a great city. So, hey, Langhorn, thank you. And, and thank you for the record. Strawberry Mansion, again, is the name of it. Uh, Langhorn's seventh full-length album, though I recommend all of them. Uh, this one is something special, and I appreciate you taking a little time with us today here at uh, KXP at our home. Thank you, John. I love you, brother, and thanks for being a, a friend all these years, man. It means a lot. Love you too, man. So good to see you. You too. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.